John Hagee is going to tell us why secular humanism is so evil. Secular humanism is the pagan god. It has filled our drug rehab centers. It has filled our divorce courts. It has filled our sheltered for battered wives. Secular humanism has filled our rape crisis centers, our mental hospitals, our singles bars, our penitentiaries, our roster of guests for the brain-dead television talk shows you see. America is becoming a pagan society. We are in a moral freefall when a school teacher cannot refer to the Ten Commandments but is approved of teaching the principles of witchcraft, our country is going in the wrong direction. When the Boy Scouts of America are censored and penalized for refusing to accept homosexual scout leaders, we are a pagan nation without shame. When we bow down to worship movie stars and rock stars whose moral code would make a sow blush, we have become a pagan nation. We have worshiped other gods and called it multiculturalism. We have endorsed sodomy and called it an alternative lifestyle. It's not an alternative lifestyle. It was, is, and always shall be an abomination unto the Lord. Yeah, wow. <laughs> That's really dumb, all of that. So, of course, you have the typical anti-gay stuff, which always comes from these hate mongers. But I love how he says, quote, we have worshipped other gods. And he says it like it's the worst thing in the world and how dare we do it. Hey John, that's kind of the idea of America. I don't know if you've taken a look at the Constitution lately, but it mentions God zero times. It mentions Jesus zero times. It mentions the Bible zero times. The only mention of religion at all is the Establishment Clause, where they say, uh, the government cannot establish a religion and there should be no religious test for office. So the government has to remain neutral on issues of religion. But this guy's acting like, you know, the country was founded by Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, and Jesus. He's just wrong about that. And then he also throws in there at one point, I love this, how all oh, schools can't teach the Ten Commandments. Right, again, that's the Constitution that pretty much says that, right? Uh, but he goes, but they can teach witchcraft. What? Have, okay, seriously, you listening, have you ever heard anybody you know in your life, ever, uh, say, I believe in witchcraft, or I, I, I am a witch? I've never heard that, seen that, that's not even an official religion, like witch, witch-ism? Like, what are you talking about? What does that mean? Can you imagine you're in, like, history class or math class, and, um, you know, he's like, all right, guys, and the, the way you do the Pythagorean theorem is you do this here and there. Anyway, uh, now let's move on to our discussion about why... Uh, I should teach you witchcraft. Here's my giant cauldron, and here's my potions, and we're gonna make little Timmy disappear. What are you talking about? This guy, he has verbal diarrhea, is what John Hagee has. And then, I love how he, I don't think he knows what paganism means, right? I mean, there's a couple, it's kind of an open definition, because there's a couple different uh, descriptions I found of paganism. But the most common one is that paganism is kind of like a polytheistic religion where nature is your actual god, right? Like there are actual gods, and many of them. Yeah, that's not secular humanism. That's not secular humanism at all. But of course, I mean, should we expect an evangelical fundamentalist Christian to know definitions? That's the last thing they would do is look that up. And then the main point is he's trying to portray well, look, when you're a humanist, right, when you believe in humans, I know, radical, uh, all these bad things happen, and you, list, you know, went through a list of all things, a whole bunch of different things, except there's only one problem with that argument, buddy. The countries in the world that have most embraced the idea of secular humanism, and the countries that are least religious in their nature, and how they function and how they govern, those countries have the best outcomes. And what I mean by that is the highest income level, uh, the best education systems, the best healthcare systems, the highest level of happiness. I'm talking about uh, the Nordic region, the Scandinavian region of the world. 